Hello and welcome to Kings at Home this bank holiday weekend. It's just such a joy that we get to be church together, to be family together. Even though we might be in our own homes, we are still one body united in Jesus. And we're going to have a fantastic time this morning celebrating him, hearing from the word and being built up and encouraged. If you're just looking in, if you're visiting us this morning, so glad that you've tuned in and hope you'll be encouraged and built up too. We're going to start with a time of worship now and I'm going to hand you over to Andy and Becky. Why don't we stand up and declare God's goodness together? Good morning, King's Church. Um, why don't you welcome God into your homes this morning? Why don't you open up your hearts and welcome him in? Um, we're going to start by singing um, All Glory. and their elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, 
saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Jesus, we want to say that you are worthy this morning of all our praise, of all our adoration, of all our worship. God, please help us focus on you and to give you praise this morning. I just want to encourage you where you are to try and keep your focus on God and give him your adoration this morning, give him your praise despite your circumstances and just enjoy worshipping him.
sing the sea bar adoration. Jesus, I delight in you this morning. I just declare you as my greatest treasure, the one in whom is found power and majesty and kindness and justice and mercy. You are such a wonderful friend. You are such a magnificent king that I will spend this life and the whole of eternity understanding you, knowing you more just count it such a privilege that you would count me as your friend and say I just want to pour out my love for you I want to crown you as king of my heart this morning and ask that I would see more of you because the more I see the more I love keep making me like you Jesus amen Lord Jesus I just pray for protection divine wisdom for all of our leaders it's an incredibly difficult time whether the leaders of our churches um, whether they're leaders of businesses or whether they're political leaders. Um, whatever our perspectives are, I just pray that you, you bless them with divine wisdom and help them in the difficult decisions that they're making at the moment and give us, the people who are having to follow their instructions, patience and peace in this difficult time. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity we have 
um, to be creative in the way that we share the gospel with others. Um, it's a unique time that we have to be able to share with those who may not originally been able to um, with things like Alpha Online, that issues like travel or locations that were issues before are no longer in the way. And I thank you for the opportunities we have to be creative in the way that we share the gospel and tell others about you. Father, thank you because you are the resurrection and the life. Thank you, Lord, you are the hope that we cling to. Lord, I pray anything that's dead in my life, in the life of the church, that you would bring back to life. Father, I pray for those who would have perhaps been struggling, who don't belong to life groups. You would anchor them to yourself, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, God, that our wealth is in the cross. Thank you that because of you, because of your death and resurrection, um, we stand forgiven here today. We stand forgiven in your love, knowing that you are completely for us and we are with you and we can be in perfect relationship with you because of Jesus. We praise you, God. Amen. Lord, it is just so good to worship you, to give you all honour and glory and praise. You're so worthy. And thank you that you love to be with us, to minister to us, to build us up, to comfort us and to strengthen us. You are so good to us, Lord. We love you. Amen. Really, it is just so good to worship God together, isn't it? To be built up and encouraged and remember whose hands we're in, a good and faithful, loving God. I've got a couple of notices for you in a moment when I'll tell you a bit more about what's going on in the life of King's Church. But before I do that, we've got a greeting this morning from Scriven and Annie Kamanga, who lead churches in Malawi that are part of our Grace Connection family. And it really is good to remember that we're family, although far apart. Um, we are all going through this together. We're part of um, God's family. And they've got some encouragement for us, some insight for us into how they're finding life. And I'm sure it's going to encourage and bless us. So I'll hand you over to Scriven and Annie. Hello, my name is Scriven Gamanga, and some of you may know me because I once visited your church when I visited England, and I lead Word of Life Church, which is in partnership with your church there. And I'm not alone, I'm with my wife. Yes, my name is Anne, as you've already heard, I'm the wife to him. And we just want to greet you this morning on behalf of the churches that are in partnership with you here in Malawi. Uh, we're greeting you at a time when the whole world is faced with this global pandemic, COVID-19. And the government of Malawi has put in measures uh, to prevent COVID-19. So it has come up with restrictions, unlike a lockdown, as is the case in other countries in the world. And so one of those restrictions is that uh, people cannot gather more than 100 at a goal and they must also observe social distance like one meter apart and also have, you know, uh, wash their hands using soap or do some hand sanitization. And we as leadership of the church, we decided that we would like to prevent our people uh, from this pandemic, but also prevent ourselves. And we said we're not going to be meeting in a church but rather we'll be meeting in small groups in what I've called house churches. And since then, that's what we've been doing. We're meeting in homes. And it's been a very fruitful time, though unusual, because people are not used to have a Sunday service uh, in a home. But uh, we're glad that uh, it is affording us an opportunity to discuss the topic that is brought by the preacher, uh, people commenting and then at the end we pray in light of what has come out from the discussion so it's quite a very enriching moment it's very fruitful people open up and people are knowing each other better and more than they would have known each other in a bigger uh, gathering on a sunday so we thank god for for these house church meetings yeah, it's really true. It's really fruitful, as Scriven has already said. But the only thing maybe which is missing at house churches or home churches is that we don't meet with uh, people, a lot of people. As you know that in church, we meet a lot of people and you uh, interact with many people. Mm. So we really miss the people at church. 
that's the only thing. But what can we do? We thank God in everything. As you know that we are in this situation, the whole of this world. So we just thank God for everything. As the word of God says that we should thank God in everything. Yeah. And so we wish you a great, wonderful and blessed morning. Yes. God bless you and bye. bye. Great to see you, Scriven and Annie. Just want to tell you a little bit now about what's going on in the life of King's Church and um, to really encourage you firstly to get involved in one of our life groups. We really love being family and to be known by one another and to love one another and to support one another, particularly in these times where we can't physically be present. It's just so good to, to be connected and um, to find out how we're all doing and enjoy fellowship together. So our life groups are a wonderful place to do that and um, they're meeting every Sunday um, and all also midweek every other week um, via Zoom and they're just a chance to enjoy God together, to pray for each other and to be built up in the word together. So do go along if you're part of one but aren't in the city at the moment, do still come along. It's um, great that all of the barriers have been removed, that we can be anywhere and yet be together. Um, so do press in um, and also if you're not part of a life group but would like to be, then do get in touch, pop us a message on social email, media or email me and we would love to get you connected into one. I also wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you a bit about one thing, which is our discipleship year um, for those who are recently graduating and wondering, you know, what to do with my life? Where is God calling me? What am I going to do? And it's an opportunity to give a year of your life to pressing into Jesus, to following him and helping us build his church here in Birmingham. And also for him to build you up as you learn, as you grow, as you follow after him in new ways and explore who he's made you to be. Um, I know for some of you, you might be feeling like your future plans are a bit on hold or less certain than they were. So I'd really encourage you, why don't you get in touch? Why don't you um, join me and we'll have a chat about what it might involve and how it might bless you. And it could be just the thing um, to help you figure out who it is that God's made you to be and what he's got for you. So do pop me a message. It's a Grace Connection. Um, Thing as well so you'll get to partner um, with other interns in other churches but I just really encourage you do get in touch I would love to chat to you about it and it could be a huge blessing for you. Those of you who are parents will have probably been keeping an eagle-eyed look on the news about schools and preschools opening and um, it seems like we might be taking tentative steps back but still our children are with us so much more than they would normally be and I know for me as a family we've been looking at ways of of trying to bless them and encourage them and juggle teaching and work and like leading them on in Jesus. And I thought it might be really helpful to get some local experts to give us some advice about how lockdown is going and how you can encourage them and get them involved, particularly on a Sunday. I'll go and get them now. So here they are, here are my local experts on what it's like to be a child in lockdown. And um, why don't you guys introduce yourself? I'm Sophie. I'm Joshua, I'm eight. I'm six. Fantastic. And these are my beautiful children. And we have been at home together for quite a long time now, haven't we? With no school, not being able to go to church or anything. How are you guys finding lockdown, Sophie? I'm really missing... Um, missing... Um, going um, to see my friends and I like going in the garden and having fun. Oh yeah, there are some difficult things and some good things, aren't there? What about you, Joshua? How are you finding lockdown? I'm finding it okay because I still get to see um, my friends occasionally. Occasionally we do, don't we? Particularly when we go out and clap on a Thursday night, we get to see our neighbours, don't we? And luckily they're really good friends of ours. God is very good to us. Like today because um, we're having this recorded video on Thursday. Yeah, but everyone's watching it on a Sunday. Isn't that mm. crazy? Talking about Sunday, could you tell everybody what have we been doing for church on a Sunday? We've been doing Grace Church. And um, I've been getting my recorder and drums out. Yeah, that's right. We have been finding the Grace Church kids' resources just such a blessing in these times. So they've got a Facebook page where they put challenges and um, interactions. And also on a Sunday, they have a service, don't they? They put out on YouTube with worship that the kids can, jo kids can join in with and a story. And it's just so lovely. I've really enjoyed seeing you guys making a joyful noise unto the Lord and really um, growing and following after God. So it's wonderful, isn't it? So I'd really recommend that to anybody who's looking for something on a Sunday. Um, is there anything else? What, what has God been telling you about or what have you been learning about God in lockdown? I've been learning um, by my book that Harriet gave me. Thanks um, Harriet. 
It's called um, Ten Girls Who Didn't Give In. Yeah. And it's about people who give their life for Jesus and at the end there's prayers. Oh wow, and you've really enjoyed reading those, haven't you? Yeah, we're so grateful for the King's Church Kids Workers reaching out, encouraging our kids, giving them um, resources. Like Harriet lent us some books or pointing us to worksheets and things that we can do. And um, it's just great that God can still meet with our family, with our children, even though we can't be together in person. And um, families, I'm praying for you. And if there's any way we can help you, do let us know. But I would point you to the the Grace Church Facebook page and also to the emails that Harriet sent out with lots of resources in and do get in touch with your kids workers every family should have one and um, yeah they're just really keen to bless us encourage us and help us go after God so it's good isn't it kids mm -hmm. great thanks so much do you want to say goodbye to everyone bye if you'd like to find out any more information about what's going on at King's Church more about who we are or how you can get involved then do go to our website www.kingschurchbirmingham.org or pop us a message get in touch via social media we would really love to hear from you and get you connected in You'll also find details about how to give on our website. Thank you so much to those of you who do give. It means that we can continue to build God's church, to see his kingdom come and to bless those in need. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to give, please do so. It'd be a huge blessing to us. Thank you for partnering with us as we go after God together. I'm going to hand you over to Steve in a moment, who is going to lead us through our last Romans talk. Um, but before that, we're going to hear from the word of God. Romans, the Gospel of God. Romans chapter 16. Personal greetings. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at Sencrii, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house, my beloved Apenitus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junior, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, my fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nerus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent, as to what is evil. The, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasure, treasurer, and our brother Quartus, greet you. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Christ, Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, King's Church. Um, we finally made it to the end of Romans. I went to Romans chapter 16 and uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you first read it, you can think, is Romans 16 slightly anticlimactic? Because 
in the rest of the book you have these amazing kind of peaks theologically where you looking at the righteousness of God that's been revealed, the wrath of God that's coming, and how Jesus is the saviour, how he's the one who comes to rescue us, that we used to be in Adam, we used to be dead in our sins, but now we're alive in Christ, that he's raised us, um, that we're no longer slaves, but we're, we're free and there's no more condemnation. You know, all these great uh, truths that we've, we've kind of seen and drawn out. And then you get to Romans 16 and it's much more personal. It's very familiar. There's a lot of names. There's 26 individuals that are kind of greeted by Paul and you think why why does this come at the end but actually what I want to kind of just say up front is this chapter is so important and Romans 16 is just as important as all the other chapters that have preceded it and indeed the theologian Emil Brunner says Romans 16 is one of the most instructive passages in the whole of the New Testament which is a, a big claim but I think he's right because what we gain from this chapter is an understanding that church is not just an organization, it's not just a collection of random individuals, actually church is a family, that we are the family of God, that the church is led by spiritual mothers and fathers who have sons and daughters who become brothers and sisters and that we are, we are God's people and we kind of represent God in that way because God himself is family, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a family on a mission, that God's mission is to save the world, to redeem the world, to reconcile the world to himself and that we as like, almost like little families here, or, here on the earth represent God and we carry on his mission empowered by him and strengthened by him and but we're supposed to be genuine family together and I think that comes out really clearly in Romans 16 Paul's love for people his honoring of people the way that he knows people the way he's done life with people that actually we have a lot to learn here and that in our perhaps bit more individualistic consumer culture, actually learning how to open up our lives, how to give ourselves, how to love other people, I think is absolutely crucial if we're to be effective um, on God's mission. We need to know how to be family, how to do it together as we go. So that's what we're going to pull out uh, this morning. If you read through the different names um, and the different people that Paul greets, you'll find that this is a really diverse church in Rome. That is diverse in, in, in kind of the nations, in the ethnicities that are represented, Jew and Gentile. Uh, you have Prisca and Aquila, you know, a couple of Jewish people that Paul knew up front. And then there's a whole load of Gentile names. Um, it's very diverse ethnically. It's also very diverse in terms of... Um, kind of rank that there are some you know some high ranking officials listed there are some wealthy households that are greeted and yet there are also some I presume very poor people uh, these two sisters we think they're sisters because their names are very similar Tryphena and Tryphosa great names um, and th their names are slave names or kind of freed woman names perhaps if they've managed to earn their freedom you think there's there's actually a, a great diversity in the church ethnic ethnically in terms of prosperity and then thirdly in terms of gender that um, I would say surprisingly perhaps um, though not if you really understand Paul there are loads of women greeted in this letter encouraged in this letter honored in this letter and I I just think that's what I'm going to put out this morning but I think it's so important to see in Romans 16 that Paul would speak this way that he's obviously lived this way that he's very very comfortable working with men and women of honoring men and women and uh, and kind of lifting them up because in our 21st century, you know, often a complaint against Christianity or a complaint against Paul is that maybe he's a chauvinist or doesn't understand what we know now. But actually nothing could be further from the truth that Paul, Paul loved men and women and enjoyed working with men and women. That's what we're going to see. Um, and I just think it's so helpful for us to realise that to, to truly be God's family, we need all of us, men and women, young and old, people from every ethnicity, people from every rank, working together, playing their part, being God's people. Um, and I think Paul does that magnificently for us. So we'll dive in with a few examples I want to pull out. The first person um, listed is Phoebe. 
and uh, she by all accounts is a very wealthy woman a successful businesswoman um, she's done well in her trade and she's used her resource and her finance to bless the people of god she's described as a patron to paul she's bankrolling some of his missionary endeavors and he then has entrusted her so there must have been a great intimacy in their friendship um, that he would entrust her to take my letter to the church in Rome um, and give it to them and read it to them and explain it to them and when they have questions answer some of those questions and help them understand what I'm trying to communicate that this was a really significant role that he entrusts to her and then when she arrives actually in the letter itself he commends her to them he's like greet her welcome her assist her um, in all that she needs that Paul clearly is very comfortable sending giving responsibility to Phoebe who has standing in the church who's used her wealth and her resources to bless the church it's an amazing woman that we don't actually hear that much about but immediately it makes you want to pray oh god will you raise up more women like phoebe in the church today who use their gifts and their skills to be successful in their workplaces and then bless the people of god in a multifaceted number of ways the second uh, kind of two people who are named are prisca and aquila and uh, they're a couple that appear in Acts chapter 18. Uh, Luke just um, kind of names her as Priscilla, a little bit more informal than Prisca. Um, but they have come from Rome to Corinth and uh, they are fellow tent makers with Paul and uh, they end up in Ephesus and there's this little interesting uh, moment where um, a great kind of preacher, missionary Apollos is preaching the gospel and doing some mighty work and it says that Priscilla and Aquila take him aside because though he's doing really well he actually only knows uh, John's baptism and they have to instruct him in the way of God more fully and so they take him aside and they, they instruct him they teach him and uh, he learns a little bit more and then he's even more effective as he goes and um, it's, it's so encouraging because it kind of tells us we all have room to grow even if we're being super effective we've got, we've got much to learn but most of the time this couple's listed um, she Priscilla Prisca is listed first and I think that's significant because obviously they're working as a team they're very much doing it together they're both following God but we're not quite sure why, but presumably either she's more prominent, maybe she's the better teacher, maybe she has a bit more profile, maybe she's wealthier. We actually don't know the reason, but there must be something in the fact that she, she is the, the prominent one. And when I was trying to think about an example, uh, just to help illustrate it, the couple I thought of was Jen and Chris here at King's Church. And I wanted to take a moment, just like Paul greets and honours Prisca and Aquila and says, you know, bless them and they risk their lives for me. I want to take a moment just to honour Jen and Chris who do so much to serve us here at King's Church. Um, well done you guys um, but often perhaps we might think of Jen before we think of Chris because she's on staff because she does these anchoring videos we maybe see her face a little bit more and I want to honor Jen as someone who loves Jesus who serves us so well who looks after all our life group leaders who goes often above and beyond to love people and to help them and serve them and in honoring Jen I also want to honor Chris because as uh, Jen's husband, he does such an amazing job, not only serving God himself, but releasing her to be the woman of God that she's called to be. I think they're a little bit like Prisca and Aquila, that they're working together as a team. They're working, how do I serve Jesus? How do we do this together? They're wrestling with all of that. And Paul honors this couple, and I want to honor Jen and Chris. And I also want to honor them in front of all of us on a video because I think it's really helpful to see that just in two couples, um, if I take myself and Julia as one couple and Jen and Chris as another couple, we all have different gifts and different strengths. And if you only looked at me, for example, and my wife Julia, you might think, well, okay, classic kind of Christian arrangement. Steve does most of the speaking stuff and Julia is at home with the kids. And I would just want to say, well, that, that's how we're working things out at the moment. We've got three young girls and we want um, to release Julia to look after them, but it won't always be like that. And actually Julia is way more gifted than me in lots of different areas. And who knows in the future how it will look. 
And then you've got Jen and Chris who are doing things slightly differently and Jen's working for church and Chris is working hard and they're also looking after their family, but it's a little bit different from us. And if I could choose a third couple and a fourth couple and a fifth couple, I would just say there's such a variety within the kingdom of God and there's a variety needed in the kingdom of God. And I, at the moment, I'm only talking about marriages. I'm only, you're not even getting onto single people and people who are widowed. And the, the point being is we need everyone playing their part. We need everyone flourishing. We need everyone comfortable in their own skin saying, I know who I am and I am called to follow Jesus. And there's such diversity within God's kingdom and we need one another to, uh, almost to bring each other out, to help each other flourish. And I think sometimes you can end up with like one model where it's like all marriages need to look like this or all single people need to look like this that just maybe isn't always that helpful. And we just need some different examples, uh, probably even way more than I've given there and just a, a very brief snapshot. But I think Paul is so helpful to us, especially when we get into this list, that just saying, look at the great range of people in terms of nationality, rank, gender, all working, all flourishing for God's kingdom. So there we have Pris Prisca and Aquila. Just carrying on with some different examples, um, Paul lists four women um, who he says work hard. So Mary works hard for you, uh, Tryphena and Tryphosa again, workers in the Lord, and then the beloved uh, Prisca, um, also working hard. And uh, four women, no men in this particular list, which I'm not sure you can draw too much out of that, other than to say Paul was incredibly comfortable working with women. So I know I've already said that, but I want to just keep drawing it out because um, I really want us to get a hold of the fact that all of us have a role to play. And so he, you know, he's obviously been co-laboring with, working alongside, shoulder to shoulder, brother to sister, kind of working for God's kingdom, pursuing Jesus. And he honours these women as he greets them. And then kind of, I just one more example, but perhaps my favourite is in verse 13. Uh, Rufus's mother, that Paul says um, she has been like a mother to him. And I find that amazing. Uh, I just think that is such an honouring way of talking about another woman. And uh, for Paul, who arguably is one of the, the greatest thinkers the world has ever known, and I'm not sure that that's even an exaggeration, you know, this man who was radically transformed by the love of Jesus, and he just goes on mission uh, to the Gentiles, preaching the gospel, he's beaten and he's shipwrecked, and all this different stuff happens to him, and yet he in his personal life has been able to develop a relationship with somebody where he can say she was like a mother to me. But Paul is not arrogant, that he doesn't think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, I'll just do whatever I want, I'm, I'll go it alone, I'm a lone ranger, I, I have enough within me. No, no, he's like, no, I need this woman to look after me like a mother. And it's tantalising because we don't quite know in what ways. And maybe he's put on one of his missionary journeys. Maybe she also took him in and fed him and taught him and encouraged him and blessed him. We're not sure. We're only left to speculate. But whatever it was, genuinely, she became like a mother to him. A, a single man. A, a, you know, a man who presumably had lost much of his family when he converted from Judaism to Christianity. His sister crops up. Um, in Acts, but we don't know very much about it that spiritually he needed he needed a mother Rufus's mother and this is a bit of a tangent But I just think it's fascinating that in Mark's gospel just think about Rufus um, in Mark 15 and verse 21 when Jesus has been crucified, it says this, And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross, and they brought him to the place called Golgotha. And Mark was writing his gospel to the church in Rome, um, and he just has his little throwaway. Simon of Cyrene, the man who carried Jesus' cross when Jesus was so tired and he couldn't take it one step further, they compel Simon, you take the cross, and it just says he's the father of Alexander and Rufus. Why Alexander and Rufus, why are they mentioned, is because the church would have known them. It's because the church could have gone to Rufus and said, Rufus, tell me about your dad, and tell me about that time when he carried Jesus' cross. 
And uh, again, we're not, uh, we can't know that for absolute certain, but I'm pretty convinced that the same Rufus in Mark is the Rufus here in Romans 16. I just think it's fascinating that you, there's this family where you could say, you know, Rufus, tell me about your dad. And he'd be able to tell you a story about how he carried Jesus' cross. And now it would be like, Rufus, tell me about your mum. And he could tell you a story about how she became like a mother to the Apostle Paul and helped him on his adventures in the gospel. And I just think, again, all that God would raise up up, more women like Rufus's mum in our day and age, people who are going to love and care and, and help release men and women to do all that they're supposed to do in God. And, and just personally, I've been so encouraged, I was thinking about Denise, for example, in our church, a woman who's become a bit like a spiritual mother to me, simply in the way that she prays. Every time I go around to visit her, she would tell me about how she'd been praying, how she'd been seeking God, how she's been before him. And I just would, would I want to honor Denise on this video. And I also want to say, I know I can't do this on my own. I need people to spur me on, to help me. And that's true in so many areas. But I've had sisters like Jen and Anna and Antonia and many others who've encouraged me and provoked me and brought me prophecies and kind of chivied me along and I've needed that. And I've had brothers like Tim and Dan and Steve Towler and again others who've just come and blessed me and helped me and spurred me on in God. I've needed spiritual fathers or even dare I say grandfathers like Derek who spoke a couple of Sundays ago, bringing seasoned wisdom. Next week, we've got Wendy Mann coming to speak on our, on our meeting because we need other like spiritual mothers helping us, encouraging us. We, we need all the people of God working together. And I know I need, I need spiritual mothers. I need spiritual fathers. I need sisters to help me. I need brothers to help me. And I think there's a place to have kind of same-sex stuff happening. Like I think men's prayer, I do that on a Friday morning is really helpful to have a women's day and you know all that kind of stuff is really helpful. We need it. But also we need to be open to the whole family of God speaking into our lives. As a guy, I need women who are going to be my sisters, who I can love with integrity as a sister, who are going to help me and shape me and also they need us, that sisters need brothers and spiritual fathers to encourage them and, and equip them and a spiritual father is different to a spiritual mother, we're going to bring different things and different responsibilities but we need each other, fully, totally, all of us, absolutely necessary and critical to being family on God's mission together. Just a, a small point of application, um, one of the things I've been kind of wrestling with uh, over these days is, you know, as we do our videos, it, not quite is it worth the effort, I think it really is worth the effort, but you, know, you could almost think, let's just get Tim Keller, for example, and let's have him as the preacher, we'll just get him off YouTube and put him on, and uh, let's get Hillsong, let's have them as our worship, and then midweek, like, let's scrap Zoom, like, we're all tired of Zoom, Zoom is tiring. Um, and uh, we'll just we'll just use some top quality material from elsewhere. Why do we put all this effort in to do a video and to do zooms and to have videos of people? And why do we keep texting you saying, please send us a video of a prayer and please send us a video of a testimony? Why is that important? It's because we are supposed to be a local family on God's mission together, that we're not supposed to just have professionals. We're supposed to be doing this together. We're supposed to we're supposed to know each other and be encouraged by each other and be able to spur each other on. That's why we go through all this trouble of doing these videos, is that we can see each other and be blessed by each other. And I know it's not everything, and I can't wait till we can see each other in person in whatever way that means when lockdown begins to be phased out. Um, but we are God's family, and we need to do His mission together. Just finally. Um, just want to pick out one more person in the list that Paul gives in verse 23, which is Gaius, a guy. And, um, you know, can't leave the guys out entirely. And uh, I, I love him as an example because it says he hosted Paul, not only Paul, but the whole household of God. Um, and so I think he's a little bit like Phoebe, that he is presumably a wealthy man, a successful man, and he also is using his resources to bless God's kingdom, that he is kind of housing Paul and he's letting him live with him and he's opening up his home for church meetings and doing things like that. And uh, I just think, you know, if we're 
convinced that we are supposed to be family and we're convinced that we need brothers and sisters and etc how do we actually make that happen because i think it's great theory but obviously the reality can be a little bit harder to get hold of how do we how do we make it happen how does it move from being theory to being something that we're actually living with i think gaius is a great example because what he's done he has opened up his home so that a single man paul can come and live with him and i think if we want to be god's family we have to learn how to open up our homes and our lives and really a lot more of our kind of worlds to other people and i appreciate whilst we're in lockdown it's maybe difficult because you think well i can't i can't do that at the moment i understand we must make sure we're taking all the right precautions but even thinking after lockdown thinking about it now can be really helpful Gaius opened up his home to a single man to come and live with him and then they discipled one another that when Paul writes his letter he can mention Gaius and as I say I think we should think about and pray about God how would you have me open up my life to other people I've been really struck reading Sam Albury's book, Seven Myths of Singleness. And uh, he talks about being a single man um, who almost certainly won't get married. And uh, just asking the questions, you know, does that mean my life is less? Does that mean I'm going to be lonely, that I'm going to miss out, that I'm not going to have family? And in some ways his answer is potentially, but it shouldn't be. Because if the church is functioning as it should, if we are truly the household of God, the family of God, actually we will welcome and include each other in such a real and genuine way that it will feel like family. And so he speaks about lots of examples about people who kind of welcome him into their lives let him stay with them let him live with them go on holiday together do all kinds of activities together and i i found it a powerful encouragement and provocation to think about how am i going to open up my life and my world to other people that we don't end up and this is i think prevalent in western society we're essentially families 2.4 children living on their own in their own home single people getting their own flats or houses living on their own and we all kind of know each other but there's just not very much interaction and we try and make it happen we have life groups once a week we have to go to someone's house to do it but we want to go way beyond that we want to open up our lives that it's feels like genuine family i knew a, a pastor called david devonish for example who specifically brought a house that was bigger than he needed so that he had spare rooms to let people come and live with him for example because he's so committed to discipling as family and doing life together in a way, a bit like Jesus, where he had 12 men and they came to be with him and they just did life together, that they've definitely bought a house to do it. And you might think, I don't have the finances, I don't have a spare room, I'm not in that position. I understand that and we're all, we're all in different situations. But is there a way that you could open up your life to somebody? Because we are supposed to be a genuine family where married people mix with single people who mix with widowed people, who mix with divorced people, who mix with people with kids, who mix with people without kids, that, you know, almost wherever you are, as I keep saying, we're all needed and we're all necessary and we're supposed to be intertwined in one another's lives so that we learn how to bless each other and we grow. And sure, we might fall out of each other, but we forgive and we grow in patience and, and we learn how to be disciples of God together. How is that ever going to be achieved? How is that ever going to be possible? I think we have to remember that we are all children of one Father, that we are saved by one Saviour, Jesus Christ, who unites us all together. It's only by being united at Him that we have any hope of making this happen. And we are all empowered by the one Spirit, Father, Son and Spirit, God who is family, empowering us to be family, to go on His mission. But I want to say, why don't we start just by opening up our hearts and saying, God, I actually want this. And if it's part of it, it's like, I don't want this. I'm an introvert. I'm not sure I'm ready. I understand. I empathize. But it might be worth just stopping and pausing and saying, God, will you help me? Will you show me if there's an area I need to grow? Will you show me if there's an area I need to lay down and trust you with that we might begin to open up our lives, that we might get to be a little bit more kind of the family that is portrayed in Romans 16. God's household, his family, is supposed to be led by spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. 
who together help create spiritual sons and spiritual daughters who become brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the family that God is wanting to create here on planet Earth, here in King's Church. I'm praying for it. I'm beginning to ask myself, is there anything I need to do? Is there a way that I can open up myself, open up my world a little bit more? Because I want, I want to get hold of God. I want to be a genuine community where we learn how to love each other, where we learn how to grow together, where we learn how to live through the highs and we also learn how to go through the lows, where we, we get to be authentic, we get to be real, we get to honour each other and encourage each other and be encouraged and be honoured. We are made for each other. Actually, we're designed by God to require each other. We're not supposed to go it alone. We're supposed to resist our culture's pull towards individualism, just doing whatever we want, just thinking, oh, church is just a group of individuals. Oh, I'll pass through, I'll go here and I'll go there. No, sometimes we have to get moved on and sometimes God scatters his people. We see that all the time in Acts. But we are supposed to get rooted. We are supposed to go deep. We are supposed to open up our lives that we may learn more about ourselves. We may learn how to love one another. And best of all, we get to understand and grow in godliness more than we would otherwise. I'm going to finish there. It's great to conclude our Roman series. Uh, if I had more time, uh, it would have been nice perhaps to recap uh, where we've been and uh, chase through some of the journey that we've been on. But I thought I'd finish by reading the doxology at the end of Romans 16. And um, as I say, is I can't go through all the themes that came up in the letter, but quite a few of them come up just in these last few verses as Paul worships. Um, but receive it as something to strengthen you. Receive it as a way of worshipping God. Let's read together. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen.
and nothing compares to your love, nothing compares to your promise, nothing compares to you, Jesus. Thank you that you're our saviour. We worship you today. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Just wonderful to worship together and be reminded that we're one family. We are one body because of the work of Christ Jesus. We have a heavenly father who's so good. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are one. We are family. Oh, so good. So good. I really enjoyed being built up by what God was doing in uh, my family's life through lockdown, both at the prayer meeting and also hearing testimonies from Beth and Steve Towler last week. And Harmony has got a testimony to share with us now about how God has really used worship not just to build herself up, but also to witness to those around her. And Andy has also got a notice for you, so I'll hand you over to them now. Hey King's Church, I'm Harmony and I live in Birmingham and I'm currently working from home. I um, have been particularly encouraged by meeting together as church family, particularly in our prayer meetings to worship together. Um, for me, it's been a bit of a lifeline to be able to focus on God, to declare his praises, to um, proclaim his good news and to focus on his truths when potentially the world around us is um, full of fear or worry. So worshipping has been an amazing way to connect with God, to draw near to our Father. For me, it's also been um, a bit challenging because I live with three non-Christians and I have particularly thin walls. So when I sing, there's every chance that they may hear. And so worship not only has been declaring God's praises, but it's been proclaiming them. It's been witnessing um, about what Jesus has done. Singing about the cross has been declaring the good news and sharing the gospel. And it's been so um, amazing to focus on that, to look at the cross and to share it in a particularly unconventional way um, with my housemates. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you today, that you might be encouraged to worship, to sing um, and to declare his good news. Um, as we come to worship as a family and I just hope that it um, helps you to draw near to God um, as I have found it does um, in this time. Um, it's great to meet together and hopefully soon that will be in person and I hope you guys all stay, stay safe and we'll see you soon hopefully. Bye! Hi everyone, um, I'd just like to um, invite you, if you're part of the 20s group, to a games night. We're running next Saturday evening, 30th of May, 8pm on Zoom. Great opportunity to catch up with each other, um, see how we're all doing um, and play some games. So I'll be sending out some more information in the week, but look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Harmony. Got some exciting news for you about next Sunday. Next Sunday at Kings at Home, we have Wendy Mann coming to speak to us. I'm really excited about her coming to encourage us and build us up. She is a woman after God's heart who just loves to see him move and loves to encourage us to go after God and all that he's got for us. Um, we've got a video coming out over social media this week where she's gonna answer some questions that I've put to her so you can get to know her a bit more. And um, I've got a little taster for you right now, so I'll hand you over to Wendy. I'm really excited to speak to you guys because I've had the privilege of connecting with Anna and Jen over the last few months and they've told me about what God's doing among you and it just sounds really exciting. So any strength I can add to what God already is doing is such a privilege. I have the privilege of working for the King's Arms for a couple of days a week. And one of my main roles is to look at leadership development. How do we help people step into all that God's got for them? And the rest of my time, I'm starting out on a new adventure. I, realized, I recently cut my hours in January from four days to two days so that I could have more time to travel, basically in response to a lot of prophetic words that God spoke to me about adventure, trusting him with money, the nations, 
And so really my big passion is to go and visit churches and to see people come alive, see people realise who God is as their father, who he says they are as dearly loved sons and daughters, and for them to realise what they carry, that they carry the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead, and that wherever they go, they get to see God's kingdom come. I love seeing people healed. I love seeing God come and meet with people and speak to people. Basically, I'm just passionate about Christians coming alive and being all that God's called them to be. Do make sure that you tune in next Sunday at Kings at Home. It's sure to be a wonderful morning with worship and hearing from Wendy. Do look out as well for that video on social media to tell you a bit more about her and her ministry. I hope you've had a good time with us this morning. It's just been so wonderful to gather together. If you are new, if you're just checking us out, I would encourage you to fill out one of our Keep in Touch forms. If you give us your details, we can connect with you. We can introduce ourselves to you. We'd love to get to know you, so do do that. We're going to close there this morning and go and have our Zoom groups now and enjoy fellowship together there. I hope you have a really wonderful time. My prayer is that you would know the tangible presence of God with you this week in a whole new way. You would know his encouragement, his fortification, his strengthening, his supernatural energy and his supernatural peace. We need it in these days, but we have a God who loves to give us all that we need. He's so generous and he's so kind. Hope you have a wonderful week and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. God bless.